All right, so in this video, we're going to actually start running some real git commands again. And uh, we're going to produce this worst possible scenario where we have um, a merge conflict between two different versions. And so the scenario you should really be imagining here is that two different people are working on a paper, um, editing it at the same time, and they make contradictory changes, and they want to merge it all, all together. And so the first thing we're going to start with is a sentence like this. And our paper.txt is going to say, my bike, which has a broken seat, is in the garage. Um, I didn't really learn this uh, uh, grammar rule until I was um, uh, in graduate school, but it turns out this is not correct. If I'm using the word which, then this is a parenthetical and I need some commas. If I change the word which to that, then I wouldn't need commas. And so, so imagine two people are working on this. One is on, the, on a, say, an airplane, so there's no Wi-Fi access to be kind of collaborating. And they both see this problem. And uh, the first person uh, who's working on the master branch um, adds some commas, which is good. And let's say they also add a period at the end of a sentence. So they made these two improvements. Uh, now let's say that somebody else who's working on another branch uh, changes the word which to that. And, and then they, let's just say add some other details. Maybe instead of saying my bike, they say my mountain bike. All right, so they have this different version. And so at this point, uh, both of these have some improvements that we might uh, like. Um, you know, the first one added the commas, uh, and it added a period. The second one changed which to that, which is kind of solving the same problem as the commas, and, um, and then added the word mountain. Now, the wrong thing to do would be to have both commas and the word that. If we do that, then, uh, then it's back to bad grammar. So, and, and of course, Git doesn't understand, you know, grammatical rules in English, so it's not going to be able to do this automatically. What we really want is a human to come in and see that both of these have something to offer, uh, but I can't just simply take all the features, right? I want to end up with something like this. My mountain bike, comma, which has a broken seat, comma, is in the garage, period, right? Now we kind of have the best of both uh, without kind of breaking any grammar rules. So that's what I'm going to be doing in an actual, uh, in an actual repository. So let me, let me exit out of this, like so. And I'm going to head over here to the terminal. And, um, and uh, I'm going to hit the up arrow key until I can SSH to my virtual machine. So SSH, my username, at, and an IP address. So let me do that. And so here I am in my um, virtual machine. Let me just clear this out so it's a little bit simpler. And I want to create a Git repository here. And there's two ways to do that. Um, one is that I could first create a Git repository on GitHub. And after I created on GitHub, I could basically download a copy here by putting the address. Um, it's also possible for me to just create a repository on my virtual machine only without ever using GitHub. And just so to get some variety, I'm going to do it that second way. So the way you create a repository without using GitHub first is that you have to first create a directory for your repository. And, um, and the way you make directories on Linux is mk for make, dir for directory, and then I give it, give it a name, right? So I'm gonna call this uh, demo, and um, and I guess I already have that. Let me call this demo one, two, three. I guess I haven't done that many demos. Okay, so I've done that, and now I can go inside of that directory. So after make dir, I'm gonna do cd demo one, two, three. Okay, so here I am, and, um, and I'm gonna do ls-a just to see what's here. And I see there's nothing, right? I mean, I always have these, right? That's the current directory and one directory up, up, but nothing else. So now if I want to kind of upgrade this directory into a Git repository, uh, it's simple. I just have to say git init, right? So this is kind of like clone, right? was how I downloaded it. Git init is how I create one fresh uh, right here, right? So I do that. And um, and you, say it's, you can see it says initialized an empty Git repository and here and so if I run ls a again, um, sure enough, I created a, a Git repository. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to um, edit edit this paper, right? So I'm going to say nano, and um, I can just it doesn't matter that this file doesn't exist yet. As soon as I say nano, it's going to create it. I'm going to do that, and um, and so I'm going to call this my story, and um, let me just head back here and copy this. Uh, my bike, which has a broken seat, is in the garage. Sadly, I can't ride it. Uh, the, uh, 
the end. All right, so that's our story, and um, and I'm going to save it now. So I'm going to say, well, I guess down here, right? You can see I I could say Control O to save it. Um, it turns out if I do Control X for exit, it's going to let me automatically save it at the same time. So I'm just going to do Control X, and it's saying, do I want to save before? Um, I do this, and the answer is yes. I want to save it, and I want to call it paper.txt. I'm going to hit enter, and, um, and now if I say ls-a, I see I have this paper.txt. Uh, if I um, if I cap that, if I cap paper.txt, I see well there's the story I wrote, and um, and if I say get status, right? All these commands are kind of letting me see the work I've done. If I say get status. I see I haven't tracked this file yet. I may have to do a git add. Um, now, before I do this, as we are kind of moving towards setting up a merge conflict, um, when we're dealing with a merge conflict, git is going to automatically open up um, a text editor. And, um, and it could be something like Emacs or Vim. We want it to be nano. And so the way we can do that, um, so we're kind of working with something familiar, is we can say export dollar editor equals nano and this is just this is actually a bash command right in bash just like in python we have variables uh but the variables are ugly right instead of just saying editor equals something right in, in bash we have to say export and then we have to put a dollar before our variable and then strangely we don't have quotes on this kind of bash is weird compared to um, python uh, but i am going to uh let me see I'm sorry, I need to not have a dollar sign there. So export editor nano, that sets the variable. And then if I said echo dollar editor, I guess I just have to use the dollar when I'm viewing it later, I've set that up. And so just like now when I'm doing nano paper.txt, right? That's how I can edit it. I'm going to say control X to exit. Later, when I'm doing my merge conflict, uh, Git is going to automatically open up nano and ask me to uh, kind of manually resolve some some conflicts that are going to arise. Okay, um, so a little bit of an aside there. So get status, right? I can see that this file is not tracked yet. I'm going to track it and then make it part of my first commit, right? So I'm going to say uh, get add paper.txt and then get commit. And, um, and I could do a message here. I could say something, but actually if I do it like this, it's trying to pop up the editor for me. Uh, so, and this is one of those benefits since I just said editor equals nano. Um, I don't always have to say dash m. It'll open up nano for me and I can say, uh, I'll just call this the first version of our story. Okay, and I'm gonna save that and exit. So control X, yes, please save. Boom, it did that. And, um, and so now at this point, if I say get, well, first let's say get status, right? If I say get status, nothing has changed relative to the last commit, right? Nothing has changed since I kind of wrote those changes in stone. If I say get log, I'm gonna see that commit I just did. And, and as usual, right, instead of something nice like C0 or C1, it has these ugly hexadecimal numbers. Um, I can see that currently the head is looking at the master branch and the master branch is on this commit. Um, I can see, okay, that was me that did it. Here's the date. And then here's that comment that I wrote inside of Nano, right? The first version of, of the story. Okay, so that's all good. And um, and let me let me do something here. I'm going to say get branch. So, so when I'm running get branch, there's two things I could do, right? I could just say get branch like that. And it's going to show me what branches I currently have. I currently have a master branch, which I'm on. Or I could say get branch and then I could give it a name. And I'm going to call this um, that branch. And uh, no, I may actually, yeah, I'll just call it that. And so if I say git branch again, I can see now I have two, two branches. And uh, I'm currently on the master branch. And, and if I run, if I run git status again, uh, actually, sorry, I want to run git log. If I run git log again, I see that, okay, on this commit, I have both the master branch and the that branch, and head refers to master, which refers to the commit. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some changes to the story. I'm gonna say nano paper.txt, and, um, and I'm gonna do a couple things, right? I'm gonna add the commas here. My bike 
uh, which has a broken seat, uh, is in the garage. Period. Okay. okay I'm going to save that. So Control X. And yes, I want to save. Yep, same thing. So if I run get status, I can see that it's modified. Um, now, sometimes what I want to do before I make changes is I want to review all the changes I made relative to the last commit. And the way I can do that is I can say get diff. And what get diff is doing is it's showing me each file. And in this case, I only have one file. I have a paper.txt. And um, in, in the black text, it's showing me some context around the changes, right? But black doesn't mean any changes. Uh, the red and green here are the changes, right? And, and that's also represented by this minus and plus. And so what this means is that minus this, instead of this, I ended up with this, right? And so by kind of comparing these two lines, I can see, well, um, there were my commas and there were my period. And if it's a very large file, this will actually save me a lot of time, right? I don't have to worry about all these other changes uh, that, that were made to the file. Okay, so these are the changes, right? Everything right here, that's just this one line. And um, if I go back to get status, remember the next thing I have to do, I edited the file and then I have to add the file, right? So I'm gonna say git add paper.txt and then get status. Okay, and so now it's ready to be committed, right? It's been modified. And so now I can say get uh, commit. And remember, if I just run it like this, it'll pop up nano and ask me to say something about it. Uh, but I'm going to go back to using this. I'm going to say that um, add uh, punctuation. Okay, right, because I added both the commas and the period. All right, so I'm going to do that. And, um, and now if I say get log, you can see I have two commits. And, um, and since I was on, since I'm on the master branch, the master followed me along this last commit, whereas the that branch is stuck behind. Right, so I, so I added my punctuation and I, and I have these two commits. All right, so that was what one person did. The other person, let me, let me just go back to this picture so we kind of have it uh, fresh, right? So I, I've just done this part up here, right? I added the punctuation. The other person is changing which to that and they added the word mountain, right? So for me to do that, I have to be working off of this initial one to make those changes, right? So I'm going to head back here and I'm going to say get checkout that. Okay, so I checked out that branch. And so a few things now, if I say get log, I'm only looking back, I'm not looking forward, right? So I, I can't even see when I'm on this branch those other changes that were made, right? As far as I'm concerned, there's only uh, one commit in history. And, and right, and that kind of makes sense, right? I'm on the plane right now, I don't have access to Wi-Fi. I haven't seen what my friend did, right? So I just have this one version. Um, and uh, and I can make changes, right? If I say get branch, I can still see that, well, there are these, these two branches, but this is the one I'm on. And, uh, and if I say get status, well, nothing has been changed yet, right? It's clean. Okay. So let me, let me edit that file again. So I'm going to say nano uh, paper.txt. And, um, and now I'm making some different changes, right? My mountain bike, uh, my mountain bike, that has a broken seat is in the garage. Okay. And, um, and so I'm going to save this, control X. Yes, I want to save that. Yeah, paper.txt. And so now if I say get status, I can see, um, you know, it hasn't been uh, staged staged yet, right? I have to do a get add first. And if I say get diff, well, I can see just like before, right? Here, here was the change that I made. I replaced this line of text with this other line of text. Took away this, minus, added this, plus. Okay. And, um, and so I'm going to do a get mint now. And uh, just to mix it up, right, last time I did the message thing, I'm going to do it without that again. And so, um, oh, what did I forget? I needed to stage it. Get add paper.txt. Remember, the, the three steps are edit, add, commit. So I did edit. Now I'm doing add. And now I can actually do my commit. If I do commit, it pops it up. And I'll say, what, what was my change? I replace which with that, 
and, and what else did I do? Um, I add word mountain, right? So I made those two changes. I'm gonna save this. Yes, yes. Okay, and now if I say get get log, I see that there's two two versions, right? Um, there's um, this last version, which is associated with the, the that branch, and, and my head is looking at that currently. And then I have this first one. And, and so notice, right, even though there's really three commits in the system, uh, depending on which branch I'm on, I'm only seeing two. All right, let me, let me just head back to those slides, right? I'm, I'm either seeing uh, these two on the top or these two on, on the bottom, right? Depending on what branch I'm on, I can't see it all. And so what I really want to do now, right, the goal is that I end up in this world where I have all the changes together um, on, the, on the master branch, right? That's the, that's the dream, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do now, the plane has landed, right? We have all the changes. We have to merge them together. And so I'm going to say git checkout master. And let's just see where things are. I, I run jet log all the time, right? So now we're back to where we were we before. We had the punctuation, the first thing. And um, if I say get branch, I can see there are these two. And what I want to do now is I want to pull the changes that my friend made down here uh, into the master branch, right? So I can say get merge that. Okay, so everything into that branch is going to get pulled into here. And get is not smart enough to do that automatically. And so when I run that, it first tries to automatically do it, uh, but guess what? There's a merge conflict. And so I have to fix the, the conflicts and then commit the result. And so if I look here, let me do a get status. You can see that I, I now have this weird situation, right? I had two different commits that were both editing this and, uh, and, and I can't really fix it off. And what it's telling me is that I, I should manually fix it. And uh, after that, I should use git add to kind of patch this up. So let's take a peek. What happened in this file.txt? Well, let me, let me do this. I'm just going to nano it. So I'm going to nano paper.txt. And, um, and you kind of see this weird thing, right? Where it's showing me two different versions. Um, you can see that there's a lot, a lot of stuff in this file that I did not type that get automatically added. And so what it's trying to show me with this part is two different versions of the same sentence, right? And so it's dividing the two versions with these equal, equal, equal. And then it's saying, well, the head version, you know, that's a branch I'm currently on, that's the master branch has this. And then the that branch, as has this other thing and it's my job as a human who understands uh, uh kind of natural languages is to edit all of these this piece so i have just one version that makes sense and so maybe what i'm going to do first is i'm going to get rid of all of this extra stuff uh that uh, um, kind of get added for me and clean all of that off and, and then I'm going to go through, and as a human, I can think about it, uh, how I can have the best version. I'm going to make the top version uh, be both of them. So uh, mountain, that, that seems like a nice addition, right? So I'm going to say mountain bike. I'm going to go forward. I have comma. I, I see that this one changed to that, um, which I don't want to do. That should not be part of this, because if I both add a comma and make it that, then it would be grammatically incorrect. So I'm not going to do that. And then is there anything else here? I guess other than that, adding this mountain bike, um, this first version is better, right? I already had the period at the end and try to fix up my other issues, right? So what I'm going to do now is backspace this up and like so. And you can kind of see like, well, this is taking me a while to type. One thing I can do is I can go to the beginning and you can say down here, right? This control K will cut the whole line. So control K and I just delete it all at once. And so this is a good version of the story that has everybody's changes, right? It has mountain, which, comma, period, um, everything that I want in my story. And so I'm gonna say control X to save this. Yes, that's good. Yes, I'm gonna write that. And, and, and so see that what I have to do is after I've resolved the conflict, which I did manually, I have to do a get add, right? So I'm gonna say get, add paper.txt just as if i was making a normal change to it and so now if i say get status 
Okay, so this is ready to be uh, uh, committed, and it says I should run git merge, or I'm sorry, it says I should run git commit to conclude the merge. So let me do that. I'm going to say git commit, and it pops up this. And you can see that in this case, you know, I could say more if I want, and normally I say more, uh, but they already kind of have a nice note for me. They say like, well, the point of this thing is that I'm doing this merging, and, um, and they have some details down here about what got changed, right? So for this one, I'm going to take it just as it is. I don't have to say anything more. Is it's a merge commit. I'm going to say control X and it did it, right? So now at this point, right, I'm going to say git log and, um, and you can see, well, there's actually four here now. I can see that, well, this is the version I'm currently on. This was the merge and it has these two parents, right? This one uh, was a result of combining both this piece and this piece, right? So history got a little bit more complicated, um, which is fine. And then it all kind of comes back to this one here at the at the beginning, right? So I finished all of this up. And so if I say get status, my environment clean, nothing has changed. If I cat out paper.txt, I see it's this good version um, with everything. And if I say get branch, well, there's still these two branches. And at this point, I'm done with the that branch. Everything that I had improved over there is now part of the master branch, so I can delete it. So I'm just going to say git branch. And well, remember that I created it like this. That's how I created a branch. Um, if I want to delete a branch, I have to say dash capital D. This is wrong. It has to be capital D space that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to say git branch. And now I'm on the master branch. And everything is simple, and I have all, all the changes. All right, so that's how you can. Uh, do merge conflicts. It's more complicated than automatic merges. And so one recommendation I'll have for you is try to avoid these, right? Try to sync up often. If you and a friend are working on the same project, consider ways to divide it, right? Maybe you work on this file, I work on that file, uh, because this is a pain, right? It takes time, uh, but sometimes you have to get into that situation where you do it.